You started with one dimensional motion when physics was cute and all was right with the world. Then things got crazy and objects had two velocities, two accelerations, two displacements. Now here you are learning about forces. You've been doing your very cute free body diagrams, learning about mass, weight, gravity, Newton's three laws and all of that. And then this happened. Let's talk about it. Here we have a brick that's moving on a frictionless surface. Is this brick moving up in the air or to the right? It's just accelerating to the right. Therefore, if we wanted to talk about the amount of acceleration this brick is experiencing, we have to know the mass of the brick and the total amount of force acting on the brick. So this brick is 1.6 kilograms. That's the mass. I have a spring scale that says I'm pulling it eight newtons. To the right. Right? Where'd you come from? Really? Like, you put me in the video. It's not like I asked to be here. Yeah. Um, he's okay. clearly pulling eight newtons up, right? No, he's pulling it to the right. You don't pay attention so, in class. I'm actually doing both. I'm not pulling this brick up, nor am I pulling it to the right. I'm doing both. I'm pulling it up and to the right. Some forces can be applied in two dimensions. Since this brick is only accelerating to the right, I want to figure out exactly how much I'm pulling to the right by breaking this two-dimensional force into its components. Each part of a two-dimensional force has a one-dimensional component. How are we supposed to find these components anyway? Like, they just... Well, if you know an angle and the magnitude of the force, you can use trigonometry. Oh, no, nah, you can have that. Uh, put, put me back wherever I came from. I don't, even, I don't even know. Since I'm pulling eight newtons at a 30 degree angle, that's my hypotenuse. And if I want to figure out how much of this force is acting to the right or on the x-axis, that's my adjacent side. I need to solve for the adjacent since I have the hypotenuse. And theta is 30 degrees. So we're going to do eight times the cosine of 30 degrees to figure out our adjacent side. And I don't know what that is. Hey Siri, what's eight times the cosine of 30 degrees? Really? So are you gonna let us do that on the test or what? Girl, what? Girl, give me an actual number. Girl. Okay, so I actually don't know what that is, and I don't feel like uh, getting my calculator out to find it, but that's what it is. <laughs> Newtons. You always put the unit. Okay. So, let's figure out the acceleration. We know that Newton's second law tells us the net force is equal to mass times acceleration. Since there's nothing else acting on the x-axis of this brick, there's no friction. This would simply be the x component of the force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. We divide our mass on both sides and we get our acceleration. Let's try another, because I enjoy making you upset. Let's draw a free body diagram of this scenario to understand a little bit more of what's going on here. We have its weight acting downward, a normal force acting upwards from the table. And this applied force of eight newtons acting to the right and up. This is a frictionless table. So there's nothing else acting on it. But what's the normal force? 15.7, it's always equal to the weight, right? Uh, no, it's not 15.7. Newton's third law tells us that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So, if there are 15.7 newtons acting down on this object, its weight, there must be a total of 15.7 newtons acting up on the object. The issue is, there's another force acting up on this object. The normal force and the vertical component of that two dimensional force or the Y component of that force, right? If I'm pulling to the right and up, that means a part of the force is acting to the right and a part of the force is also acting up. So 
So we actually have two forces acting up on this object. The normal force and the Y component. So if that's the case, that means the normal force and the Y component of the applied force have to be equal to the weight. And can we find it? Absolutely, come on. So remember, the sum of all things acting down on the object have to be equal to the sum of all things acting up on the object. The weight of the brick, 15.7 newtons, has to be equal to the sum of the Y component of the applied force and the normal force. Remember, eight newtons is the applied force and it serves as the hypotenuse here. Theta is 30 degrees still, but this time we're looking for the Y component and it's opposite the angle. So we're going to do eight times the sine of 30 degrees to get the Y component. And we're lucky because the sine of 30 degrees is what half? Half of eight, four, four newtons. We're trying to get the normal force by itself. It's being added to four. So we need to get rid of the four by subtracting four on both sides. 15.7 minus four is equal to 11.7 newtons. That's the normal force. That's how much force is acting up on this grid from the table. Not so bad, right? For more practice, check out CRSI.org. Like, subscribe, share, and stay tuned next time because I have to, I have to handle a lie that I told about that table. Thank you for watching.